Now, this is Michael Smith of MedPage Today. I'm in Toronto at the annual meeting of the American Academy of Neurology, where the buzz in the corridors has been about a potential new therapy for multiple sclerosis. The theory is that one of the factors involved in the, the pathogenesis of the disease is, in fact, a vascular uh, obstruction in the veins leading from the brain. Why this has caused such an, uh, such an uproar, such an explosion of interest, I is that that offers an immediate possibility for surgical intervention that might affect the symptoms of the disease. Uh, I'm here with the gentleman who's at the center of this firestorm, Dr. Paolo uh, Zamboni of the University of Ferrara. Dr. Zamb Zamboni, welcome uh, to MedPage today. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Uh, yes, I, I describe the association between a condition called CCSVI, this chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency that uh, is caused by malformed valve and obstruction um, likely of uh, malformative origin in the jugular and in the vigus vein. And uh, uh, this condition, of course, uh, impairs the venous drainage of the central nervous system, so may potentially lead to iron deposition and also to a worsening clearance of uh, viruses, uh, opportunistic infection, cytokines and toxins coming from uh, the main disease, the main neurological disease. So uh, one suggestion was to treat uh, uh, in a pilot study in which uh, was published the last December in which we demonstrate uh, some advantages for patients with uh, a better neurological outcome and very interestingly uh, a better quality of life that is in a chronic disease like this is certainly one of the more difficult goal to achieve. Uh, this pilot study was very important since uh, the regional government in Italy and also the Italian MS Society finally decided to support uh, a randomized control trial in order to understand exactly the advantages of this additional tool in the fighting against the multiple sclerosis. But it's fair to say that at the moment, I think, Dr. Zamboni, that the work is still preliminary. You, you have a randomized controlled trial that you're starting. There's another pilot intervention study uh, that's being started here in North America. What needs to be done? What questions need to be answered before you can say to multiple sclerosis patients and their physicians, uh, yes, this works, or no, this doesn't work? Uh, I think that uh, in, in this particular study, we try to reach uh, a primary endpoint, never reach it. That is prevention of disability. Because till now, uh, drug showed a very good effect, uh, effect, especially on MRI endpoints. So there was more action in terms of MRI endpoints with respect to clinical endpoints. So we want to uh, focus more on clinical endpoint adding also, of course, MRI measurement uh, without stopping and discontinuing the disease-modifying treatment that are in course. So CCSVI treatment is a coherent treatment by angioplasty of the CCSVI condition in addition to immunomodulating treatment because we do not know, again, in, at this point, mechanism related to autoimmune disease. So we maintain both treatment with uh, a strong endpoint. Mm -hmm. it is this is the study that you're starting in, in Italy? Yes. When will that report? How long is that going to take to do? Uh, I think that uh, uh, next June probably we'll submit to the IRB the, the request of the study and so we are ready to start next summer. Okay. Um, in the meantime, of course, patients, as you know, uh, are clamoring for more information about this, this condition and the potential treatment. Should, if, if a patient comes to a doctor and says, uh, look, I have MS, should I get, should I get tested for, for this condition, um, should, should the answer be yes or no at this point? Uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the replay cannot be 
black and white. My recommendation is for people uh, who have uh, an MS condition with a good control on behalf of the treatment, I recommend uh, to maintain the treatment and wait for uh, the evidence through the trial in the next years. For people that are in a rapid decline without any treatment, uh, any effective treatment that can modify the disease course, I think that uh, the neurologist who follow this patient may offer this treatment on uh, a compassionate ground. I think that this is a proposal that I invite the neurologist to consider because angioplasty is in, in the venous system is uh, a treatment with low risk, is a safe treatment. And if the patient should not have, is desperate mm -hmm. because should not have any uh, response to the treatment that are currently available, I think that this is, could be a good opportunity with a high sanction to improve at least the quality of life. The, the question, though, is, is whether people should get tested, and there is some difficulty of knowing what the right test is for CCSVI. Uh, MRI, uh, venous, venograms, uh, is, is it difficult to, 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 to diagnose this condition? Uh, yes, because uh, uh, it's probably more difficult the diagnosis with respect to the treatment. Uh, gold standard is catheter venography but of course is uh, uh, an invasive technique. Uh, so we experimented the color Doppler examination with a special protocol that probably need uh, of trained personnel because it's completely new kind of investigation uh, although use the current uh, equipment for color Doppler examination and uh, we found a very good agreement by using this non-invasive screening technique. Uh, I know, for example, that uh, they are center in uh, the United States that uh, can be offered this, uh, uh, for example, in Georgetown University, there is a group of uh, BBLE that uh, knew very well venous malformation and now is in currently investigating people, for example. Uh, I do not recommend uh, MRV because uh, the cause of the narrowing are flap, membranous obstruction, septa, that cannot be detected by MRV. MRV uh, presents a very good diagnostic accuracy in measuring the cross-sectional area, but it's different from an arterial stenosis, are intraluminal defect. Mm -hmm. So very teeny interlumbular effect that cannot be seen uh, by MRV. So I discourage uh, to use this kind of assessment because it can give false positive and false negative. Right. So there are in fact still uh, some obstacles uh, even to getting the diagnosis. Um, one of the questions that arises is uh, many people who are on the medications for MS find that they are difficult to take, they're, they're not pleasant medications, um, and naturally would like to stop them if they could. Uh, and some are saying, well, if this treatment's going to be available pretty soon, why shouldn't I just stop my medications and at least not have these side effects? What, what's your answer to that question? I really do not know, because uh, I treated patients that from the beginning uh, did not use uh, any treatment with uh, results similar to those achieved in patient taking treatment. But uh, I do not have any evidence of the exact mechanism uh, linked between CCSVI and MS and the autoimmune reaction. So I cannot answer honestly to this. But, but if a patient came to you and said, Doc, uh, I'm, I have MS and uh, I'm going to... I, I never, never discourage a patient to, 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 the, to, the, to the drug. Uh, possibly they may use alternative drug. I see. Uh, but uh, I, at this point, I cannot recommend to discontinue treatment. 
I think that seems to be uh, the consensus. Uh, there's no point uh, jumping the gun on this. Uh, Dr. Zamboni, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. In Toronto, I'm Michael Smith, MedPage Today.